The worst Fisher Sozin attacks by Bobby Fisher. On the left, we have a list of openings. On the right, we have a list of players. Welcome to a new series. I have already covered the best King's Indian attack by Vladimir Kramnik, the best Banco Gambit by Pal Banco. In this video, I will be switching it up. I will be looking at the worst Fisher Sozin attacks in the Nidorf by Bobby Fisher. The games I will be looking at are between Fischer and Tal. But firstly, who are these two players? He's American. He became world champion in 1972, beating Boris Spassky. His peak rating was 2785 on the 1972 FIDE list. His most famous result was winning the US championship with 11 out of 11. He's well known for playing openings such as the Nidorf and the King's Indian as Black. He died at the age of 64 in 2008. I will attach a video to his three most famous moves. Next up, who is Mikhail Tal? He's from Latvia. His style is well known. He sacrifices. He loves playing attacking chess. He would play the most aggressive lines versus the Sicilian. I looked this up on the Chess24 database and he's played Bishop G5 84 times against the Nidorf and the classical Sicilian. His nickname is the Magician from Riga. His peak rating, 2705 on the 1980 FIDE list. He became world champion in 1960, beating Mikhail Botvinnik. As white, he would play E4 often. Just like Fischer, he played the Nidorf most of the time. And he played a few Kings Indian. He died at the age of 55. The games that I will look at were when Fischer was just 16 and Tal was 23. The two games are from the 1959 candidates. I looked at the head-to-head -head scores and was very surprised. Tal beat Fischer 4-0. This was back when they played each other twice. Two whites and two blacks. You can see from this table, Tal won the 1959 candidates and then he became world champion the following year, beating Botvinnik 12.5-8.5. So let's have a look at these two games now. Bobby has white, Mikhail Tal has black. We have a Nidorf. e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, take, take, knight f6, knight c3, a6. Fischer has faced a Nidorf with white 36 times. He drew 8, only lost 6, and has won a whopping 22 games. Bishop c4 called the Fischer Sozin attack and rightly so Fischer has played this opening 24 times in his career with white he won 13 drew 8 and only lost 3 games one of the games was in a simultaneous so we won't look at that game however we will look at the other two games against Mikhail Tal Bishop c4 e6 Bishop b3 First game, Bishop e7, September 1959. In the candidates, f4, castle, queen f3, queen c7. White now plays castle. b5, f5, b4. Fischer makes a mistake with f5 because it gives black the chance to play these thematic pawn push. b4, displacing the knight on c3. The knight moves and then e5. Now why do we do this? Because if the knight was on c3, it has the chance to hop into d5, but now it doesn't. Knight e2, bishop b7, putting pressure on e4, defend with knight g3, knight d7, bishop e3, bishop c6. Putting further pressure on e4 with queen b7 next, bishop f2, queen there, rook e1, d5, another thematic pawn push. This opening has gone so well for Tal. Opening up the center, take, take, knight e4, knight f4, and now c4. A bad move from Fischer, blocking his own bishop on b3. Pause the video if you want to have a go. How to exploit the pin on the b7 f3 diagonal. I'll give you five seconds. And the move is g6. In the game, Fischer took f5, a really nice move. G7 causing a distraction because after take, queen g3 check, then king h8. But this actually benefits black. 
After king h8, this benefits black because rook g8 is next, starting a kingside attack. Knight c5, take, 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 queen c7, defending e5. You don't want to play queen a7, even though it is winning. Rook e5, it defends the knight. Knight takes g2, f4 is next, and black has just begun his kingside attack. After queen c7, queen e3, rook a e8, and rook e2. Fischer's position is so bad, he plays rook e2 to defend g2. What else was possible? g3, but the light squares around the black king are just so weak, thanks to the immensely strong bishop on c6. Knight h3 check, king f1, f4 coming through. If you just move the queen, f takes g3 check, king e2 check, forcing the king on the d-file and after rook d8 winning the queen, winning the game. So after rook e2, tal takes, take, and bishop takes g2. I have never seen Fischer get destroyed like this. It is only by researching, in preparing for this video, I found some of Fischer's worst losses. Who knew Fischer could lose like this? Knight takes a6. If you take the bishop on g2, then black will take the knight on c5. Fischer grabs a pawn. Queen a7 check, king takes g2, check, king h3, and Tal doesn't even take the knight. He uses the fact that white's king is just offside and mates him on the h-file. Let's start with queen g7. Cutting the king off, bishop d1, rook e6, and that is it. Rook h6, there's no good way to stop it. After bishop b3, now we will look at b5. Same players, Fischer versus Tal, same tournament. Candidate 1959. f4, b4, knight a4, knight takes e4. Grabbing a pawn, a bit risky because you're so behind in development. Castle, g6. Tal plays g6 to stop Fischer playing f5. Fischer plays f5. You've got to hate that feeling when you play a move to prevent your opponent's plan and then they play it anyway. A heart-sinking feeling. What has black done? Not a lot. White is so far ahead in development, or for the cost of the e4 pawn. And black hasn't moved any piece except for the knight on e4. Take on g5, knight f5, crashing through in style, rook g8. You can't take on f5 because queen d5 attacks both rook on a7 and threatening mate on f5. Bishop e6, queen a8, bishop g7, black is ready to castle, but white is much better. Rook g8 played, and bishop d5, wow. You can't take it, man. Rook a7 played by Tal, if you do, queen d5 attacks f7, knight e4, rook a8. If bishop f5, rook f5, continuing to attack f7, e4, a8. If rook a7, check. Block with the rook, queen takes b4. This is a better version than the game. Because white's queen is far more active and he has taken the b4 pawn. Back to the game, Tal played rook a7. Bishop takes e4, e f5, bishop f5, rook e7. Stopping white getting a check on the e file. Also, black has developed only his rooks. How about your minor pieces, Tal? Come on, man, you're better than this. Bishop takes c8, queen takes c8. Bishop f4 played. A better move is rook f2. In the game, bishop f4 played. Pause the video if you want to have a go. Why is this move a blunder? I'll give you five seconds. It's time for a double attack. The rook on g8 is so useful, so let's use it. Queen c6 threatens checkmate on g2 but also the knight on a4. Queen f3, take, bishop takes d6. Perhaps Fischer was thinking black's king is still in the middle. It's okay to give up a piece. Play continues. Queen c6, offering a trade. Bishop takes b8. Does this get your piece back? No, because queen b6 check, attacks king and bishop, moving the king and queen takes b8. Black is a bishop up, but his king is still in the middle. Queen c6 check, played in the game. Another option was to play rook a e1, threatening the very nice queen takes f7 check. If you move the king, queen d3 check. 
I would rather be white here because it is easier to play if rook d7, queen takes h7, attacking f7, so let's defend, check, king c7, check, it feels a bit unclear, king b6, check, rook d6, queen takes b4, check, and you can go king a7, and what are we saying? White has 5 pawns, black has 2. Stockfish might be saying black is a little better, but it doesn't matter because for a human being, it's easier to play with white. Back to the game, queen c6 check played, rook d7, check, bishop e7, rook takes f7. Here Fisher goes wrong with this move. One option was queen f6 using the pin on the e-file. If you get out of the way with king d8, queen takes f7. Five pawns versus three pawns, and white has the safer king. White is about to get another one. Stockfish says better for black, but so difficult to play. Rook e8, queen takes h7. Five pawns versus two now with the safer king. It says black is much better, maybe with king c7 or queen d6, finding a way to unravel, but I am not a computer and neither are you. Rook takes f7, king takes, queen e6 check and then taking the rook. But why is this variation not so good? Because tile now goes queen d6. Finally, black is getting out. With this move, all black pawns are defended. Queen b7, rook g6, c3, a5, queen c8, check. No need to go queen a8, check, because queen d8 defends a5. Queen c8, check. King g7, queen c4. Tal now uses his bishop to reroute with bishop d8, going for checkmating threat on h2. Take, take, g3. And now a huge decision by Tal. Queen c6 check. Swapping off queens is a good strategy in general when you are winning. But is this enough? Because you only have two black pawns. Rook e4, take, take, rook b6. The star move. Now the b pawn will remain alive. If you go a3, you push with b3, and the b2 pawn is too weak. Bishop can go to d6. Bishop can even go to e7, sacrificing itself on a3. King g2 played, king f6, king f3, king e5, king e3, check, king e2, king d5. King d3, bishop f6, rook c2, bishop e5, rook e2, rook f6. Rook c2, rook f3, check. King e2, back. King d3, bishop d4. Controlling the maximum number of squares. The perfect square for a bishop. a3 and b3. Tal is now winning on the queen side. Now, why did Bobby play a3? What else was possible? Well, you can't just sit here and do nothing because of rook f3, check. Then rook f2, check. And then swapping off rooks. For example, if you did g4, then I think swapping off will be good. Here, check, take, take, and then king c4. And this should be winning. Because any push, you can push yourself. Bobby decided to act now a3, pushing, and rook c8. Fisher is calculating three to four moves deep, and almost gets the b-pawn. But Tal saw that one move deeper. Here, if rook d2, it is the same problem. Rook f3 check, rook f2, the rooks come off, bishop takes b2. You can't come in closer. This is winning for black. Rook c8, bishop takes b2, check, king c6, rook b8, and rook f3, check. King c4, only one move for black, you have to chase the white king away. Or else it might be a draw. Rook c3 check, game over. King b4. White now has a threat with rook c8. So black goes back with king c7. Rook b5. Are black's pieces tangled up? No. Tal puts the bishop on a square you would never normally place a black bishop. Bishop a1. Wow. The pieces have now been untangled, making way for victory. a4, b2. Fisher resigned because if king a5... Rook on b5 controls the promotion square. You play rook c1, forcing promotion, and that is game over. Which opening player matchups would you like to see next? 
let me know in the comments below. If you really enjoyed this video, consider a small donation. It really does support the channel. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Thank you so much for watching.